OpenAI has just announced a revolutionary new form of agents called Deep Research. And this releases the most powerful research agents that we've seen into the wild. Now, on a popular benchmark called Humanity's Last Exam, this new OpenAI model is scoring 26.6%, which is more than double the score of its nearest competitor. And it leaves the Deep Seek R1 model in its wake, which scores only 9%. Now, the key thing to understand about this new deep research model is that it allows the AI to go off independently and perform complex research tasks for up to 30 minutes at a time. Now, this is crucial for any project that needs detailed research. So if you're looking to write a book or explore the possibility of a business idea, if you're considering purchasing a complicated piece of equipment or a piece of real estate, it now allows the model to go off and research a whole host of different sources and come back and synthesize all of that information and give you a recommendation based on real facts. This is allowing the AI to understand and work on more complex and sophisticated problems than ever before. And by the end of this video, you'll not only understand the capabilities of the new deep research agents, but you'll also understand how it works. This is the future of AI and agents are going to be a huge part of our lives. So it's important that you understand what they do and how they work. If you're new here, I'm AI Samson. And on this channel, we explore the latest advances in AI technology. So what is this new agentic version of ChatGPT that we have? Well, it is an agent that uses reasoning to synthesize large amounts of online information and complete multi-step research tasks for you. Available to pro users today, plus and team next. So they're rolling it out to the top tier straight away, and it's going to be available for others in the coming days and months. Now, the essential elements of this is it's a version of ChatGPT that has enhanced capabilities to go off into the web and complete complex tasks for a much longer period of time. This is like allowing ChatGPT to perform detailed research tasks where it will go through a number of different steps, find a whole host of different references, and synthesize all of the information into a detailed answer. So let's go ahead and take a look at exactly how that works. Here, the example shows somebody asking the prompt, compile a research report on how the retail industry has changed in the past three years. Use bullet points and tables where necessary for clarity. Now, the first step is the AI will ask for clarifying questions. So it will ask for specifications and anything that is unclear about the prompt. You can then go back and give it the direction exactly that you had in mind. The AI then goes ahead and summarizes the brief that you have given it to make sure clear alignment on project objectives. Now, the next step is that a sidebar opens and you can track exactly the tasks that are being performed in the background by the agentic AI. Here you can see that it's going off to various different websites and finding detailed information about different parts of the project. It then outputs the results into a clear answer. The great promise of AI in 2025 is the ability to integrate agents into our workflows. Now, an intelligent agent is an agent that perceives its environment, takes actions autonomously in order to achieve goals and may improve its performance with learning or acquiring knowledge. Now, an agentic AI is a subset of intelligent agents. It expands this concept by autonomously pursuing goals, making decisions, and taking actions over extended periods, effectively embodying a novel form of digital agency. And we're already seeing some remarkable demonstrations of how agents are able to take phone calls and also perform actions on the web. Now we can see that deep research is like having a research assistant at your fingertips. What would take hours to perform can now be done in just a matter of minutes using deep research. You give it a prompt and ChatGPT will find, analyze, and synthesize hundreds of different sources to create a comprehensive report. It 
leverages reasoning to search, interpret, and analyze massive amounts of text, images, and PDFs on the internet. So the key thing here is this agent is about researching rather than taking actions on the web. It's able to bring in a whole host of relevant information and pull out the most important parts for you. So who is this useful for and why should you care? Well, they say this is important for people who do intensive knowledge work in areas like finance, science, policy, and engineering. I also think this is an incredibly useful tool for those who are writers, journalists, or content creators. Now, the key thing here is I think this is useful for any area of life that needs reliable research. So if you're looking to purchase a car, to go on holiday, or invest in property. So let's take a look at a few different examples of how we can put deep research to work. First up is a business example. And here the prompt is, help me find iOS and Android adoption rates, percentage who want to learn another language, and change in mobile penetration over the past 10 years for top 10 developed and top 10 developing countries by GDP. Lay this info out in a table and separate stats into columns and include recommendations on markets to target for a new iOS translation app from ChatGPT, focusing on markets ChatGPT is currently active in. So here we have a business prompt asking the AI to go off and research the potential product market fit for a new ChatGPT translation model. So here we can see the results from GPT-40 compared to the results from deep research. And immediately the first thing we can see is that deep research actually goes ahead and creates a table, whereas 4.0 does not. Beyond this, you can see that Deep research brings in specific facts and numbers. It references these and gives you the exact sources where it found this information. Whereas that is not obvious from the 4.0 model. Now, as for the recommendations, because perhaps that's the most interesting part, what it actually recommends after synthesizing this data. Deep research recommends Japan, the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. And it has very similar recommendations from the 4.0 model. However, this differs more amongst the emerging economies, where the 4.0 model says that China, India, and Brazil are good options, whereas the deep research model points to Mexico and Brazil. Now, one of the key restrictions from using models from ChatGPT at the moment is for the fear of hallucinations, where the model goes ahead and invents imaginary sources, quotes, or information. Now, what OpenAI says about its latest model is that it can sometimes hallucinate facts in responses or make incorrect inferences, though at a notably lower rate than existing GPT models. Now, what I think this is particularly interesting for is if you're an entrepreneur or a business owner or anybody who is looking to research the potential for an idea, this can help you get a pulse over what are the opportunities related to your specific vision. For example, I'm often thinking about what courses may be the most useful for people and how can I help people the most? And I can take this information and ask ChatGPT to give me some market research on a couple of different course ideas. Now, another extremely important option for this is in researching credible journalism. And I am in the process of writing a book and I am so excited about leveraging this for surfacing specific studies and references that I can use in my book writing process. Not only will it give me useful facts and figures that I can bring in to my book, but it'll give me the exact references so I can double check that these in fact exist. Now, another demonstration from the model is the needle in a haystack example. And this is where a person is asking a specific TV show that they watched and they cannot remember the name of. Now, one area where LLMs are undoubtedly giving us huge potential for evolving the quality of life of millions of people is for medicine. Now, it's possible to get very useful insights into different medical situations using ChatGPT. And here we can see that the user is asking for a very specific question related to
programming efficiency of protein sequences. Next up is an example from the world of user experience design. This relates to defining and understanding the most important design patterns for building complex web applications and mobile applications. And here you can see that it references some extremely important studies to demonstrate the answer to the query. And the query is about whether it is important to add icons to buttons to improve user understanding. Now, a particularly interesting use case for this is if you are thinking of creating a new purchase for an expensive piece of equipment. Now, you may often have to go off and research all different types of brands and specifications to get the piece that you want. I recently bought a MacBook Pro and deciding on which version with which RAM and which SSD size to buy as well as the size and also throwing in the mix thinking of getting one of the latest MacBook Airs I turned to ChatGPT to help me decide and although it gave me a recommendation to go with a MacBook Pro this tool would give me even more confidence that I could pass out all of the different metrics to find the perfect option for me. Now, the example they show here is for somebody looking for a snowboard. And I think this works particularly well for expensive exercise equipment. So if you are looking for any winter sports equipment or cycling equipment, this can certainly help you differentiate between vast numbers of different product options. But what I'm particularly interested in is using this to explore real estate options. Now, this is a opportunity to leverage the ability of the AI to go off and pull in specific options for purchasing real estate. I'm interested in making a few global bases in places around the world, but I don't have the option to travel to all of these in a short space of time. And I'm particularly interested to see what insights the AI can divulge about new real estate opportunities. Now, one particularly interesting feature about this is that it's able to browse over different files, bring in data from different sources and create graphs using all of this different data. So this is incredibly useful for performing unique pieces of research and demonstrating the findings visually. Now, if we look at how this model performs at certain benchmark testing, it is absolutely stunning. We are looking at the benchmark test called Humanity's Last Exam. And this is a multimodal benchmark at the frontier of human knowledge, designed to be the final closed-ended academic benchmark of its kind, with broad subject coverage. The dataset consists of 3,000 challenging questions over 100 subjects. And what that means is that it is an extremely challenging multimodal test for AIs comprising of 3,000 different questions and the results are quite remarkable. The OpenAI Deep Research model achieves best-in-class scores reaching 26.6% accuracy. Now this is far and above many other AI models. Notably, DeepSeq R1 scores only 9.4, and GPT-40 is way back with just 3.3. Now, what's particularly interesting about this Humanities Last Exam benchmark is just how low the models score, with the top score being 13%. So jumping from that to 26 is an absolute revelation. However, the developers of this benchmark have speculated that models could exceed 50% accuracy on HLE by the end of 2025. And what would that mean? Well, it would mean high accuracy on HLE would demonstrate expert level performance on close-ended verifiable questions and cutting edge scientific knowledge. But it would not alone suggest autonomous research capabilities or artificial general intelligence. Now, if we're talking about who gets access to deep research, OpenAI said it's making deep research available to pro users today, but it's limiting that to just 100 queries per month, which is a pretty low amount of queries. Now, it expects that support for Plus and Team users will be coming next, followed by Enterprise. OpenAI is targeting a Plus rollout in about a month from now the company said, and the query limits for paid users should be significantly higher soon. It's a geo-targeted launch as per usual, and OpenAI has no release timelines to share for customers in the UK, Switzerland, and the EU. So what is particularly exciting about this model is it paves the way for more evolution within the AI. 
allowing it to go off and perform detailed, intricate, and complicated research tasks. And what this does is it opens up a pathway for the AI to start creating its own knowledge by taking all of the information that is available to humanity and synthesizing new ideas, hypotheses, and insights from existing knowledge banks. Now, what OpenAI says about the next steps for agentic possibilities inside of its models is for combining both research agents and operator agents. And this allows an AI to not only think and research about a problem, but then to go out and perform tasks related to the information that it has received. And they believe that this will enable ChatGPT to carry out increasingly sophisticated tasks for you. What are you excited to see agents do? Do let me know in the comments. And feel free to download my free ebook that explains a number of possible AI side hustles in the description below. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. And I wish you a delightful day.